Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey, this is Lincoln. Once again, Johan and I set out to record a standard little 30-minute episode, but the topic, will customer success even be needed in a couple of years, was just so fun to talk about, we ended up going over an hour, so we had to split it into two episodes again. We came up with five reasons customer success will still be needed in the future, and in this episode, we set the stage for this really interesting existential discussion about customer success's future, and we get through the first reason it'll still be needed. In episode two that drops next week, so make sure to subscribe or follow so you don't miss that one, we'll cover reasons two through five. Now, before we jump into our conversation, I want to remind you that we have a brand new program starting at Impact Academy on March 4th, 2024, that's all about customer-centric automations and digital customer success. A link to learn more and sign up is in the show notes or description for this episode. Okay, here we go with part one of this super fun conversation on whether or not customer success will even be needed in a few years. Take it away, Johan. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. It's uh, time for Impact Weekly. Fresh new question coming in here, Lincoln. I'll just hit it off here. Hi, guys. Uh, The pod is great. Uh, Here is a somewhat provocative question. Will customer success even be needed in a few years? Would love to get your view on this. Okay. So provocative. Yes. But maybe we should be a little bit provocative back to this person and say, why do you need CS now? It's not like it's a law of physics or anything. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that. So yeah, why are we even doing this? Why do we even do CS now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I think what this person is getting at is, of course, that things, I guess, with AI, with technology, with things going on there, I guess that's where this person is coming from. Will customer success be needed when we have a chatbot or what? Whatever? Yeah, uh, totally. But I think it's a relevant thing to talk about as well is, of course, the, the role of customer success. Yeah, I think I think historically, customer success has been, I was going to say slow to evolve. I think there's an attitude that is slow to evolve around customer success, but I think customer success has been shown to evolve quite rapidly and adapt where, where needed to, to changes in the market, to changes certainly over the last four or five years, right? We've seen a lot of changes and I would say customer success, generally, customer success management in inside of companies has has changed dramatically to adapt yeah. to those. I think knowing that everything is always evolving, that there is no there's nothing about customer success is static. Not, and that's nothing specific to customer success. This is just in, in business, nothing is static. But I do think, again, like I said, historically attitudes around customer success, especially from customer success leaders, have been less open to change. And I think some of that has, again, historically, been due to companies not really valuing customer success. And and some of that being what we've talked about a lot on this pod, which is customer success leaders not really positioning customer success in in a way that that gets everybody else in the company to see the value in customer success, right? So when change is needed, there's a reluctance to to want to make those changes because I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want anybody to even remember that we're here because if they remember that we're here, they might see that we're not bringing a lot of value and get rid of us. Of course, we know that's just not not generally how things work. We need to make sure we're evolving. We're taking advantage of, of new technology. We are understanding that our customers have an evolving appropriate experience and that we're shifting to match that wherever we can. The question is, will will customer success even be needed? And I think that's just, I like what you said, being provocative back. Why do we even do it now? 
why do we focus on customer success now? Why do companies yeah. invest in it? When a company comes to you at Start Deliver to invest in a CS platform, like why are they doing yeah. that? Right? Yeah. That's that's something to explore. Yeah. No, and I think having the experience myself, I know like when you when we didn't work with customer success, it hurt us, right? It we lost customers, we had churn problems, we had we got bad reviews, we had bad references, we had we had real pain when we didn't do this in a good way. Um and that's why we invested in customer success and that that's how we understood uh, the upside and the value and and the, the power in it. Uh and um I think that's the that's uh, why you have customer success. Uh and of course um it's uh I, I think that's also, we will get into it later, why we believe there's going to be a uh, big, th we believe, of course, customer success will be needed in coming years, just because it can bring so much value to a company, to, to make the business sustainable, to help you grow, ha help you keep customers, bring in, yeah, get more advocates and all that. So I think, the, I think we need to look at it in the right way here to say, you, we have customer success today because we see what it can bring to the company, and 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 of course, if we if that doesn't happen, of course, why would we even have it today? The need to reduce churn, or on the flip side, the need to retain customers. Yes, that's not going to go away. Just we we want to make sure that our customers stay longer. We want to make sure that while they stay longer, they certainly don't reduce what they pay us. We want to reduce contraction. Mm. Meaning if a customer started out paying us $100 a month, mm. that at the very least, they don't start paying us less for whatever reason. They downsize yeah. their account or they need discounts to stick with us because we're not delivering value. We want to at least make sure that they're going to keep paying us what they have been paying us. Yeah. And then ideally, we get at least a large portion of our customers to also buy more or increase yes. their spend with us, right? Increase... Yeah their consumption so that they, that we get more revenue from them over that extended lifetime because they're staying longer and now they're buying more. I don't see any of that, that, that going away because that's no. just kind of core business unless right. business changes. And I'm not mm. saying it won't. I, I no. the hardest thing to predict is the future. So yeah, who knows? But yes. un, unless sort of basic business completely changes, there's going to be a mm. need to make sure your customers stay longer, to make sure they buy mm. more. And then to your point, to make sure that they advocate for you. I don't see a world where customer re reviews become less important. No. I think they become more important over time. Now, there's a whole, that, that whole industry is, has a lot of maybe cleaning up to do. But there's room but, for improvement. There's yeah. some room for improvement, yes. But I don't see that that going away. Or no. the need for whether it's public reviews or whether it's just customers giving you behind the scenes references, whatever, I don't see that going away. So we need a way to ensure that all of those things are happening. Yeah. Now you can piecemeal tactics together and probably solve for most of those things, at mm -hmm. least in the short term. But customer success as a holistic strategy can solve for all of those, both short-term and long-term. And so, again, assuming the, the fundamentals of, of business don't change, we're going we're gonna to need to do those things. Customer success seems to be the most efficient way to get all of that. So I don't see it, the need for customer success going away. Will customer success look different in the way that yep. it is delivered in, in a few years? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think this is where what the, the person asking the question is getting at a little bit as well. Yes. And basically asking maybe, do we need humans to do the customer success? I guess right. that's where, and I think it would be interesting here too, before we get into some like our home turf, which is more tech and SaaS and subscription businesses and so on. Maybe it's just good to do a, like a parallel. I have been, my background when I was younger, I worked at a lot of hotels. I think I did. I worked as a bellboy carrying uh, luggage up to people's rooms. I was in the reception. I was cleaning. I was doing the breakfast. So I, I had a lot of jobs in the service industry. And I think 
maybe we should use that just as a reference here for people just to see what's going on there and yeah. are there parallels to our world? For sure. I I didn't know that about your background. That's cool. I think yeah. a lot of times what we what we do early in our careers or early in our work experience will influence what we do later. So I just think that's fascinating. I worked at a donut shop. Yeah. So that influences my love of donuts. Anyway, but but yeah, so hotels, yeah. if you What's travel extensively or, yeah. or even just occasionally, you, you probably notice some changes in hotels. Mm. We're talking about the fact that some hotels, some very cool, hip hotels that are like catering to Gen Z guests mm. might have a, a self-service check-in station. Exactly. You go there, there's nobody to be found. You yeah. go in, you maybe scan a QR code or, or something right. and you do your check-in and you're good to go. You get your room key. But, and I remember staying at a place when we, when I came to Stockholm in 2023 for impact day, my wife and I then went down to, to Copenhagen and we stayed in a, a really cool hotel for whom we were probably not the target demographic, but there we were. We did the self-service check-in. It was great because I enjoy not interacting with other humans, but I also wanted a coffee just directly to the right of mm. that self-service check-in kiosk area. Mm was a full service bar and, and coffee area mm, or is with that, probably yeah. eight people working there behind yeah. the, the, the various bars. And there was a, a, a ton of, of guests just hanging mm. around. So it wasn't like this hotel didn't have people uh, mm. working there. It's not like it was all like autonomous. It was just that they realized mm. that there's different places that they need to put their humans. And yeah. The check-in was not one of those. Their guests right. are, are generally tech savvy, but in reality, there was really nothing. You didn't have to be savvy about the tech to, to check in. Mm. It was very, very easy. Um, so they didn't just didn't need a person there. So they could take and that they probably person. picked the room already, right? Online, oh, was, they picked, exactly. picked the room. Did you want a balcony? Did you want a, uh, like, a, what view did you want and all that? So you knew the room already. So Absolutely. Yeah. And this was an independent hotel. So I didn't, I didn't have an app or anything for them. But if I use a Hilton branded hotel, for example, yeah. I'll mm -hmm. use their app and use the digital key selection so that all mm -hmm. of that happens. But then I don't even have to go to a kiosk. I just have the, literally the key on my phone and just mm -hmm. go directly to the room. But th what was great about this hotel was that they realized where they needed to put their humans. And they needed to put their humans at the coffee bar and at the yeah. regular bar. Right. Because that's where humans thrive and where, as a, a guest, I want to yeah. interact with and somebody. Exactly. And oh. you wanted your perfect double espresso, right? And uh, you want exactly. to, to get that, pick the beans or whatever even. And, that's and I'll what tell you. Getting, that was the added value and, and that was your experience you were looking for. Absolutely. Because I'll tell you, at least right now, the perception would be if they had a, a self-service espresso machine. Yes. With a paper cup or yeah. even, even yeah. A, a ceramic cup or something, but like it's self-service. The perception is still of that. Like it's, I don't know, it's a mm. coffee vending machine, even if it's a really yes. nice thing. So having a person there pulling the espresso for you, mm. even if it's fully automatic behind the scenes, mm. like there's, it's, there's still something to that. So you want yeah. that. And yeah, they, they knew where to put their people. And that's so they, a Gen Z hotel, they have that figured out. And like I said, you have Hilton branded hotels, which maybe there's some cooler brands, but essentially they're all the same. Yeah. I can use the, essentially the self-service check-in just on my phone and go directly to yeah. the room with the digital key, or I can go to the check-in line and, and talk to a human, right? Mm. So there's a hybrid approach. They have yeah. both. Exactly. They certainly want you to go, they want you to use your digital key. In fact, Hilton just sent me a message that said, if you use your digital key on your next trip mm. they'll give you like five thousand points because number one they know that if you travel a lot like extra points that's a motivator yeah. and they wanted me to use the digital key so i won't go to the person right. working the check-in line so they're trying to motivate that action with something that actually matters to me which is points in that context yeah. that works that's nice exactly should i need to talk to somebody there's a person there and then yeah. you might have a high-end hotel um, that could also be independent, um, that, you know, maybe they don't have an app. They don't have mm. self-service check-in. They are all about sort of what we would consider in, you know, in the SaaS world, high touch experience, right? Right. 
they might welcome you at, you know, at the, somebody's going to take your luggage. They're going to bring you in. Somebody might bring you a coffee or a, a wine before you even get to the check-in area. And then it's this whole experience, right? Because it's all about that high-end experience. Mm. And so in, in hospitality, you're seeing this understanding of the customer and catering to them yeah. with the appropriate experience. And exactly. that's what I think we can learn a lot from yeah. that industry, or we can look to that as just an example of understanding right. the customers and delivering appropriate experience. Yeah. No, but I think it's my own parallel there. When I was working young, when I was younger in the hotel, I was doing the reception. I was handing out these physical keys, a lot of people behind the, in the reception, right? And we had the coffee machine automated, right? Well, the opposite. Uh, but of course, uh, it's all about what is the experience, what is the goal of this, the customer coming into the hotel. And if we, I think if we can automate things that don't add to that, don't add to the experience, don't add to the, what they're trying to achieve with staying at the hotel, that's great. And then we can actually move that into a barista. One hotel I stated, they had a DJ playing all day, right? Mm. So they paid a salary to a DJ, but they had an automated check-in, right? Mm -hmm. You you have to think about it in that way. I think I think there's a lot of good parallels to back to the question here again that you can automate a lot of things, but you can also by doing that unlock people unlock or customer success work to focus on what really can bring the customer to the next level in terms of experience yeah. and also in terms of what they're trying to achieve with our product. That's exactly it. Like I at that hotel in, in Copenhagen, I'm thinking, I, I just didn't need somebody to help me check in, but I absolutely did want somebody to to make that really good espresso for me and, or that, that really great drink. And maybe having a DJ there is something that yeah. would be really cool. Putting the right people, putting people in the right places is exactly. really what I think critical and, and using the our humanness in, in the right mm. way and then using technology to enhance that. I think that's really important. But I think this question also... There's another angle here that I think yes. that, that popped into my head, which is in customer success management. So now we're getting back. We're going away some, from something fun. We'll talk about something not so fun because <laughs> that's how I like to roll. I like to bring us down. Yes. Let's back to Lincoln, the downer. Yes. <laughs> anyway, no, but look, in customer success management, even though a lot of people will, will talk about how it's a scientific approach to something or whatever, the fact is in a lot of companies, they just threw people at the problem. In the US, we say we, we throw bodies at the problem because mm. you know, that's a fun way to talk about your humans yeah. that work for you. Yeah. But basically we said, we just need a lot of, we, we need to help our customers. So we're just going to hire a bunch of people, as many people as we, we can get away with. And now we have a customer success management organization with a lot of people. Even then we're probably still over capacity. They probably still mm. have too many customers, but we just threw people at the problem. Mm. And so when we move from the growth at all costs era to mm. the efficiency era, or at least the more efficient growth era, now you have heads of customer success scrambling to justify headcount or just going from one extreme to the other, which is our humans are too expensive or we didn't get the results we're looking for. So the knee jerk reaction is let's just get rid of all of our humans and go full digital right. only customer success or a digital only motion or whatever. Mm. Luckily, I, yeah, we're not seeing that too often, but we can each think of several examples of that Definitely. kind of thing happening. And mm. that's, I, I, that's not the, maybe in the short term, we we're talking about one company that shall not be named that got rid of their customer success organization to, or shrunk it down to just a sort of a, a pool of some yeah. customer success managers, which is, is completely violating the, the appropriate experience for at least yeah. some of their customers. But they're doing this because they're going to go public. And so they want mm. that ARR per employee to be to look better or yeah, their margins the to look better, good, like whatever it is. And we're talking about the fact that it's almost guaranteed that in a few months, because it, this yeah. is some lagging indicators here, but in a few months, mm. they will probably be in a not so great place. And, and they'll mm. probably have to start putting together a different customer success strategy to try yeah. to get their metrics in order. But for the time being, they look better for their IPO, right? Yeah. This is the... The, the messy behind the scenes stuff that nobody likes to talk mm -hmm. about. That's the reality of yes. layoffs and things happening because we're trying to, we're trying to hit some efficiency metrics, but whatever the reason we're seeing some companies, if not just get rid of all their humans and go digital only, we, we're, we are seeing some trying to 
maybe downsize their CS org and move, do a lot more self-service deflection, move a lot more to async, move to pooled resources, things like that, which is not, a, which is not in and of itself bad at all. We should totally be taking advantage of technology and what we can do now versus what we can do just a couple of years ago is insanely different, mm. but you have to do it right. Yes. And, and you can't just do it because what we were doing wasn't working. So let's just try something completely different. No, yeah. you have to approach it the right way and make sure you're still delivering your customers appropriate experience. Right. So that's and the challenge. Yeah, it is. And I think where people get this wrong is that if you look at what we do and what customer success is really about, it's about working with a customer in a, like a long-term relationship. For most of us, we keep customers for many years. And what happens during this period is that things change. Do they change on our side? Our product develops. We add more things to it. We solve more use cases. We expand our capabilities. Things change on our side, what we can do. But things change on the customer side. Uh, we yes. know that for sure. They change their goals. They achieve a goal. Maybe they have a next goal. They want to do more. Uh, people change on the customer side. Their strategies change. All that change on both sides, uh, that dynamic, it's very hard to automate and standardize. And, and I think here is where, uh, where humans are key. And, and this is very often, and this is also something that's, it's something that's overlooked. And it, especially if you look very short term, you will miss these things. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. If you're talking about misconceptions or, or the way that, that historically customer success leaders have thought, but this is another thing that comes up still, which is this idea that I guess things aren't going to change. So it's just this not recognizing or not wanting to accept the fact that, yeah, both parties are evolving. Yes. And, and we need to make sure that we're paying attention to that evolution and accepting it and really not just even accepting it, but riding with it. Like yes. the more you try to fight it, the, the, the worse off you're going to be. Your customers change and evolve and grow and, and your relationship with them should change and evolve and grow as well. And that's where a lot of the expansion really comes in. Understanding, like you said, customers have new goals. They're, st they're stacking goals. This is an opportunity for them to consume more of your product, consume more of your service, whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, you're doing them a disservice if you're not putting these new opportunities to use your product in new ways or to use add-ons or adjacent products or whatever. If you're not putting those in front of them as they evolve, number one, you're not actually helping them. That's not customer success because these are things that they need. Number two, you're not going to get more revenue from them, which is one mm -hmm. of the reasons why we're in business. Yeah. And number three, they still, they need to solve for these things that are now important to them. And if they don't realize that they can do that with you, that's when they quote unquote outgrow your solution exactly. and they go find an, another vendor. When, yes. if we had just recognized that our customers evolve mm -hmm. and shared that we have evolved as well mm -hmm. and made it, and made that evolution matter to them. Cause sometimes we'll do mm -hmm. product announcements. Yeah. We just released this thing, but we didn't explain it to them why it, in, in a way that matters to them. So they didn't recognize that this new capability that our product has is actually exactly what they need to solve for this updated goal that they have. Yeah. And so they move on to another product. So we mm -hmm. lose them. So this evolution on both of yes. both parties is, is something to not just accept, but like celebrate and recognize that is, that's the future. That's what takes that's this long-term relationship and, and makes it long-term and meaningful and yeah. hopefully profitable and something that is really a win to be so cliche for both parties, because we are in this together. We do have joint accountability. If they're right. successful, we're successful, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. that's a really- No, but this, really this evolution point. thing, I think is exactly answering this, the question on a higher level is to say, will customer success be needed in a few years in, in for, forever? If you believe things will change on your side, on the customer side, I think that's the reason, basically. But we will also now come back to, of course, and as you said in the beginning here, will we do customer success the same way as we, we did today? I think, no, it's like the hotel example, right? How, the, how we did hotels for 10 years ago is not how we do them today. Right. Same will be with customer success, but it's, it's a little bit, I think we, everybody can relate to hotel experience. It's maybe harder to see it where you are today. And, and that's why we now will 
let you in on a few things that we will believe is why you will need customer success going forward and also a bit how it will evolve. And I think if we sum it up to start with here, it's going to be more strategic. It's going to be more about the, where the human connection really matters. The barista example, we need to be baristas or DJs or <laughs> even PTs or whatever you have now in the modern hotel rather than a receptionist just handing out the key, right? Yes. That's perfect. That's a perfect example. I think the hotel example just encapsulates all of this so nicely. So I think we basically have five different sort of reasons why we think CS is going to be, why it's going to remain important other than everything we've already talked about, just to give you some uh, sort of a concrete list here. That summary was great. So I think if we break it down, the first one is really that humans re remain essential. So it's what you said, Johan, putting, making sure that we have humans in the places where humans do best or mm -hmm. where humans are required. And there's in, in AI, there's this, this idea of fully autonomous or having a human in the loop or having a human on the yeah. loop. And we can apply right. that same mm. thinking here if you want to. And that is essentially, do you want or do you need or do your customers want or need a sort of self-service, like fully autonomous, like just do everything themselves experience? Or do they want a human sort of on the loop, which is watching and making sure that everything is going well? Mm. Or do you want a human sort of in the loop? which is where they're work working directly with the human. I think that's an interesting analogy. And to mix analogies and metaphors, also going back to hospitality, we were talking about before we, we started recording, the restaurant industry. Yeah, This is another place where obviously you can get food in a lot of different places. And, and obviously quality of the food and, and everything is going to vary. But essentially you have, you have service where the, mm. this is just the, the delivery of the food. And then you have hospitality, which yeah. is, think of that as the customer's appropriate experience. And you might have this, the same food. You're not going to, but you could essentially have the same food being served in a place where you go pick it up yourself. Maybe you ordered online and then you're going to eat it in your car. Okay? Yeah. And that's fine if that's, that's what you're looking for then. But I could have maybe that same food, but I make a reservation. And I take my wife to this restaurant and we sit down and there's a waiter who, who doesn't just take the order, but makes recommendations. Maybe they did some recon before oh, yeah. we showed up. Maybe the reservation system does some, some OSINT, some open source intelligence, and it pulls in yeah. your stuff that you like from your social profiles. Um, yes. Not creepy at all. Dangerous stuff. <laughs> That's why I get banned from restaurants. <laughs> So <laughs> they won't even let me in. They're like, your reservation has been denied. Yeah, sorry. So, <laughs> so like, that's a quality restaurant. Basically, we show up, they know everything that we want, but they still make recommendations. It feels very personalized. Mm -hmm. They bring us our first course. And then as soon as we're done with that course, our next one magically shows up hot and, and ready to go. And you're mm -hmm. like, how did that happen? There was, there was an expediter or somebody that was literally watching us to make sure to see where we were in, in the first right. course. So they could tell the kitchen to start working on the second course. Mm. So it would be ready when we are. That experience is just completely different, right? The service is still getting food. And it, like I said, probably not the same food that I'm going to eat in my car, still getting food. It's the hospitality side of things. And we could equate that to customer success and the idea of desired outcome. Right. So desired outcome is goal plus appropriate experience. In this case, mm. the goal is I want to eat a burrito. The appropriate mm. experience is I'm going to eat the burrito in my car. The goal in the other in the other situation is I want to have this nicer meal with my wife, maybe right. not a burrito. And my appropriate experience is is everything we just talked about in terms of everything from the re the reservation to the actual interactions I'm having with the wait staff at the place. And it's this idea of humans remaining essential to the equation, though I think is what's yes. really important. And so putting your humans in the right places is critical. In the example of picking up food and eating it in my car, I don't know. I don't, the humans are making the food. They're, they're there if there's an issue, mm. but in terms of the actual interaction they have to have with them mm. in that experience, the, the appropriate experience is, is that the humans are not super critical to the interactions, but they need to be there for quality assurance. They need to be there mm. to actually cook the food. They need to be there. Should there be an issue? It's almost like if we said you have synchronous, you have one segment, that's synchronous one segment, that's async in one segment, that's inbound. 
This is almost like that inbound. They're only there if they're there if a customer needs them. Yes. Otherwise, pretty much autonomous. So this would be somebody that's what on the loop, right? right? They're there to make sure everything goes right, but they're not really interacting. Yeah. But the the higher end restaurant, you're gonna have a totally different experience. And so humans yeah. remain essential. Just to yes. wrap that that point up. Remember, humans have the ability to to deal with sort of complex issues, emotional situations, mm. building trust. At least at this point, some customer segments are still going to need to have that human interaction to fully trust everything that's going on. Will that change? Will that evolve over time? Probably. That's mm. Maybe those types of customers are going to be fewer and fewer. For now, that's still something that you need to understand how important right. that is to your customers because- if you, if it's right now to at least a segment of your customers, human interaction really drives trust yeah. and you get rid of it, you just violated the appropriate experience for, for a, maybe a large portion of your customers. Yeah. You literally hurt trust with them and that might cause them to churn or just not renew when at renewal time. So you really have to be careful. You really have to understand your customers. And for yeah. some customers, that human interaction is super important. There's ways to scale that human interaction. We'll talk about that in yes. a minute. Well, just getting rid of that, you're not a you're not a burrito place necessarily. No. You might be. No. But and if yeah. you are, that's fine. But you could probably add other things to it, even if you are, right? Uh, Absolutely. Hey, Lincoln here again. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Now remember, in episode two that drops next week, so again, make sure to subscribe or follow so you don't miss that one we'll cover reasons two through five that customer success will still be needed in the future. And remember that our Impact Academy training program on customer-centric automations and digital customer success starts on March 4th, 2024. A link to learn more and sign up is in the show notes or description for this episode. Talk to you next week. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.